On Capitol Hill, the January 6th Select Committee is about to share striking, never-before-seen video along with new testimony and evidence, all with a focus on former President Trump and the central role the panel says he played in the attack on democracy. Welcome to CNN's live coverage of the January 6th hearings. I'm Anderson Cooper. I'm Jake Tapper. This is the final public hearing before the midterm elections. Committee members are promising to hammer home their urgent argument that Donald J. Trump remains, in their view, a clear and present danger to American democracy as Trump continues to push false claims about the 2020 election. Committee aides tell us that the hearing today will zero in on Trump's state of mind on and around January 6th. We're told we're going to see and hear from Trump cabinet officials and other new witnesses who have recently been interviewed by the committee that could potentially include former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, former Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, and former Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao. Some of the most compelling evidence, we're told, is likely to come from the U.S. Secret Service. The service has turned over more than a million emails and other communications to the Select Committee. The messages could potentially shed new light on Trump's actions and intentions on January 6, 2021. They could potentially corroborate some of the bombshell testimony by former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson, including her claims that Trump knew supporters at his January 6 rally were carrying weapons, were armed. Committee aides say the hearing will feature new video footage showing efforts to respond to the violence of January 6 as it was unfolding. Committee member Congressman Jamie Raskin, Democrat of Maryland, says all the new evidence will make the case that January 6 was premeditated and that President Trump, in his view, was overwhelmingly culpable. Let's go right to Capitol Hill and our own Manu Raju. Manu, uh, tell us what you're learning about the Secret Service communications that, we're gonna, that are going to be revealed in this hearing. Yeah, a source with direct knowledge of the matter tells me that the committee plans to show messages that the Secret Service was aware of increased violent rhetoric that was on the social media site Parler, rhetoric that was directed at government officials. In particular, the day before the January 6th attack on January 5th, 2021, one agent reported that some of the, that violent rhetoric was directed squarely at then-Vice President Mike Pence, who, of course, Donald Trump wanted to overturn the election results while presiding over the joint session of Congress certifying the election results on January 6, 2021. Now, the committee is also has messages showing how the Secret Service was aware of weapons on the crowd, on, in the crowd, on January 6 of that rally that Donald Trump attended, the rally in which, of course, led, preceded the riot at the Capitol. They were aware of bear spray, riot shields, and they were aware that some of the people even had guns. I'm told that the messages will reveal that they were aware that people had body armor, ballistic helmets, radio equipment, military-grade backpacks, and some of these people did not want to go through magnetometers, the screening services, to make sure that they were not weaponed. This, the Secret Service was aware that people did not want to get screened at a time. And recall that Cassidy Hutchinson, that former White House aide, testified that Donald Trump did not want these people to go through the magnetometers themselves, did not want them to get screened, even though the Secret Service clearly knew that they had weapons. Now, the committee also has an email detailing a bit of Donald Trump's mindset in the aftermath of the Supreme Court rejecting an effort to try to overturn the election results in mid-December 2020, Donald Trump was, quote, pissed, according to one of the messages that we expect to be seen here. So this is a big part of today's testimony, Jake. All these messages coming from the Secret Service, aware of what Donald Trump was doing and aware of what was happening on the rally that preceded the riot. All right, Monty Raja on Capitol Hill for us. Thanks so much. Uh, Jamie Gangell, uh, we're also told that there's going to be some uh, striking, never-before-seen video. What can you tell us about that? So we have learned from multiple sources exactly what this video is. We've never seen it before. It is video behind the scenes of top congressional leaders, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy, Chuck Schumer, after they're evacuated from the Capitol. They were taken to Fort McNair. I am told it is remarkable, it is compelling, that it shows the congressional leadership interacting on the phone with then-Vice President Mike Pence, with other uh, officials trying to stop the riot, trying to do the right thing, and that it is in sharp contrast to what? To Donald Trump, who for 187 minutes just sat there uh, this is something we have never seen before, and I'm told it's stunning. Yeah, Trump, Trump aide uh, Sarah Matthews uh, said that because Trump didn't do anything during that time, that's why she resigned that very day. Uh, and that's going to be one of the themes, Dana Bash, uh, how 
culpable Donald Trump is. What, do you, what, can you, what can you tell us about that? That's exactly right. Two sources familiar with the prep for today's hearing say that's really the most urgent, the most overarching goal that they have is to refocus on Donald Trump himself, his, quote, action and inaction. That's how one of the sources I talked to put it, and his central culpability in all of this. And it is in part going to be illustrated by what Manu was talking about, all of this new material that the committee has gotten from the Secret Service. The emphasis, of course, is going to be what the goal and the, and the mission of this committee is, which is the days leading up to, months leading up to January 6th and what happened on that day. But the committee members want to also make a very stark and clear point that the former president is a, quote, clear and present danger in the future. Their audience, of course, the American people, but also one source I talked to was very candid, saying it's also the DOJ, the Department of Justice. Interesting. And I wonder if it's the Justice Department even more than it is the American people at this point, who have probably largely made up their minds about how they feel about this. Right. And so the Justice Department has its investigation ongoing. Members of the committee, if we rolled back the tape six months ago, would have said, what are they doing? Why aren't they being more aggressive? I think the committee has come to understand, actually, behind the scenes, the Justice Department is doing considerable work bit of a timeout now about being public because we have an election in 26 days. Uh, but so there's a debate in the committee still about do you have a direct referral? Do you lay out? We, we, the committee members, believe Donald Trump broke law A, law B, law C, law D. We think maybe other people broke these laws. The shift seems to be against that, but just laying out in the report very clearly what they did. Uh, so you have a proxy debate going on here, too. They want to make the case against Donald Trump. Donald Trump cannot be on the ballot again until 2024. There's an election in 26 days. Um, the legacy of January 6th lives in races all around this country. Some candidates on the Republican ticket who were here, here on January 6th, at the Capitol in the crowd. Some who helped Donald Trump try to overturn the elections, including the man running for the governor of your uh, home state, Pennsylvania. Um, others who are running saying that the legislature should be able to come together. If we don't like the way the people voted, we should be able to come together and overturn those results. So it's interesting, as the committee makes the argument against Trump 2024, the roots of this are getting deeper and deeper into American politics, deeper into the Republican bloodstream. And so you can make an argument about 2024. I think 27, 28, 29 days from now, we're going to be looking at the results and maybe seeing that the cancer has spread pretty significantly. I think that that's a big fear. And, and Abby Phillip, for that reason, we have seen conservatives, these two Republicans who are on the committee, Adam Kinzinger of Illinois and Liz Cheney of Wyoming, actually going and endorsing Democrats even though th th these are, especially Liz Cheney, you know, died in the wool conservatives, yeah. endorsing Democrats in places like Arizona because these election liars who are they're running on a platform of I will not count the votes in Democratic leading counties uh, are on the ballot and could win. Yeah, I mean, country over party. I mean, imagine such a thing. It seems really far fetched, but I think they understand that you can't even get to. Uh, partisan differences if you don't even believe in the fundamental issue of democracy in the first place. And for that, Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney have uh, essentially been uh, become estranged from their own political party, both of them uh, basically implying that they don't have a home among Republicans right now or until they fully the party fully rejects Donald Trump. I think one other thing about uh, Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney and their effect on the committee's work is that they understand that the power of the evidence really matters because they're not just speaking to Democrats and people who already believe in them. They already they also want to talk to their fellow Republicans. And I think today's hearing uh, in which we're going to hear a lot from a kind of almost like third party, the Secret Service and things that were happening contemporaneously, I think it has the effect of uh, basically saying, like, these are people who don't really have a skin in the game. And here's what they were saying at the time. And I think that's a really powerful source of information at this particular stage in the hearings. Yeah. Uh, factually, legally, morally, politically, all comes down to Donald Trump. Donald Trump was the person who set this all in motion by the big lie. He was the person who, for whom this all was beneficial. He was the one trying to stop the peaceful transition of power by whatever means possible, legal, illegal, violence, lies. And it all comes back, it, 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 all the audiences, um, this connects to all the audiences, including the DOJ, because the two statutes involved that are relevant here are 18 U.S.C. 371, conspiracy to fraud the United States, which requires just basic deceit and 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 lies in, in trying to 
obstruct a lawful function of government. And in 1512, the obstruction statute, which says that if you, if you corruptly, again, that could be through lies or violence or anything else, to um, obstruct an official proceeding, which this absolutely was, of the United States government, you go to jail. And it all dovetails. I guess we'll see if we're a nation of, of uh, laws or men uh, coming in the coming days as the January 6th committee uh, is getting ready to begin today's hearing. We're getting new information about the committee's deliberations on possible criminal referrals to the Justice Department. We'll tell you what we're learning next.